There are different ways of forming a loving and caring family. Adoption is one such route or pathway. Adoption brings joy on both sides. The children want love, hugs and a home. The parents have lots of love, hugs and a home to share. Blood is thicker than water is often misinterpreted. The true meaning arises from the medieval times that bloodshed shared on the battlefield is stronger than the water of the womb which means that bonding and sharing can form kinship and family that is stronger than the ties of blood this world adoption day we bring to you intimate and informal conversations of adoptive families along with read aloud stories on adoption by children from across the globe todd par Anushka Ravi Shankar and Keiko Kaza to name a few. We believe that these inspirational first person stories of adoptive families and the read aloud stories on adoption by children will mainstream adoption in everyday conversation. When I got married, I wanted four children, two biological and two adopted. Now I got only halfway through. I'm Naina Muttapa, and my older biological son is Tinek Balachanda, 21 years, and my adopted baby is Jyoti Balachanda, 19. Now most of us think um, our biological children are meant to be with us. Uh, they could be no one else's. I think the same is true for our adopted children as well. My husband and I had actually uh, decided to adopt a little boy, um, about two or three years younger than our son. Uh, we almost adopted a five-year-old, but for various reasons, it didn't work out. About three years later, Jyoti popped up on our radar. She was eight years old and she was a girl. So how did we decide to proceed? I don't, I really don't know. Um, it just seemed right. The adoption process dragged on for about three years. Um, you know, all of the tedious mountains of paperwork. And then of course there was demands of my career also. Um, anyway, finally it was time to go pick her up. And I made the trip to India by myself. My husband and son got her room ready in our home in the USA. They had moved a bunk bed that we had purchased for our son when he was three into her room. They thought it'd be fun for her, you know, it had a slide, uh, uh, and if she decided to have sleepovers with the new friends that she was going to make in her new life, um, it would work out. About 10 days after she arrived, she came running into the kitchen, um, held my hand, and led me to her room to show me something. Um, and imprinted on that bed was the date of manufacture. It was the exact birthday, including the year of my daughter's birthday. Now, what, what else would you say? She was just meant to be with us. So here's Jyoti with some questions for us. Did you ever feel like you wanted a little brother? instead of the little sister? Well, I, I think that's kind of a stupid question because in the in the end, it doesn't matter whether you're my brother or my sister because you are who you are and uh, you're part of the family. And so I think, I think you're great just as you are. Oh, thanks. Um, as it was getting closer for me to get home, did you ever, how did you prepare? So I think a lot of a lot of people think it might be stressful or whatever, but really I don't think it's I don't think it's too different from as someone's parents having a biological kid. And it was nice that you were like someone I could actually talk to yeah. instead of like a little baby crying in the middle of the night. <laughs> and uh, it's also nice that you were there to you know share in the expectations of our parents. Yeah. So that was that, I think it, in some ways it was actually nicer than just having a having another biological sibling. And, yeah. Uh, in the end, I think it, it doesn't really matter whether you're biological or adopted. You are still, like I said before, part of the family. Since the adoption took a really long time, did you ever feel like giving up? Well, not 
So if you're asking me nine years later, I would say absolutely not. I did not feel like giving up. But if you'd actually has asked me at that time, um, I, you know, I had times where I thought, I'm just too busy for this. We didn't give up though. We, it just took us a little longer. How could we give up? You were meant to be with us. Um, I remember there was a time when I after a few months I came, you were ready to give me up. Were you actually going to send me back? Or? Hmm. <laughs> was I going to give you up? Was I going to really give you up? Yeah. We did have our challenges, didn't we? Yeah. In those first few months, while you were trying to adjust to a new family and um, break ties with a family that you had spent so much time, the foster family you'd spent so much time with, um, it's it's hard. I, I wondered if, you know, adopting an older child was such a good idea after all, mm -hmm. because older children build relationships in their life. Yeah. Um, and when they do, it's hard to walk away from it. Yeah. So, you know, I, um, um, I would say that our children don't come with, um, with manuals or instructions, uh, whether it's a biological child or an adopted child. So I think as long as we can make the decisions that are in the best interest of the child, um, it all works out. Hi, I'm Shabnam Hashmi and I'm an adoptive mother. In 1986, we adopted a girl child and uh, when we went to Palna from where we adopted her, when we looked at her for the first time, she just stretched her hand towards us. And that was the beginning of uh, a very strong bonding. Um, our daughter was uh, one year at that time, uh, extremely malnourished, and she was not even uh, crawling at one year. So after she came home, within a few hours, we saw her blank eyes uh, started sparkling. And uh, that was the, you know, a sign of what uh, warmth and love can do to a child. And since then, it has just brought uh, joy to our lives, to our family. We have a biological son who is older than nine years. Um, and now, of course, she's 25 years. This is 24 years ago that we had uh, adopted her. At that time, when we went for registration, we were told that we can get guardianship because we are non-Hindus. And there was uh, only HAMA, uh, Hindu Adoption and Maintenance Act, or there was Guardianship Act. So after we uh, brought her home, uh, we decided to challenge this. And we went to the Supreme Court. And actually, we went to the Supreme Court on her behalf, basically saying that a child has a fundamental right to be adopted because had she gone to a Hindu uh, house then she would have got all the uh, rights of a biological born child but because she was coming to a family which was not Hindu she was not getting those child so we fought that for nine years and finally uh, when the judgment came uh, frankly I was very very disappointed because I was uh, hoping that they would give a judgment where they would say that being adopted is a fundamental right, but that did not happen. But nevertheless, our uh, lawyer, Colin Gonsalves, told me, he said, you don't realize what you have done and what this case has done. This has opened the doors for all religions. And in fact, that is what Supreme Court had done. It had expanded the definition of the Juvenile Justice Act. And uh, since then, irrespective of who you are and which religion you belong to, anybody can adopt. And um, we are very happy that, you know, we were instrumental in that. Um, so um, on this day, uh, which is an international adoption day, uh, we want to tell everyone that, you know, if you want a child, if you want either a girl child or a boy child, go and adopt. And uh, once you adopt, you'll realize that there is no difference whatsoever. Whether the child is biological child or it is an adopted child, there is no difference. Both children bring equal happiness to a family. And if you have a biological child and an adopted child, you realize 
that they fight with each other like any other siblings whether two biological uh, siblings or two adopted siblings or one adopted and one biological you will see that there is no difference whatsoever so um, my daughter is now 25 years and um, extremely bubbly and full of energy and a very creative kid and uh, her coming into our house has just transformed our lives forever and i hope that other families would also um, you know experience this happiness on this international adoption day thank you hi i'm rehan and this is my sister binda this is the story about how you got home you want to hear okay mama and papa and i were a small happy family but we were missing something mama and papa really wanted to have got have a little girl to complete our family and i was desperate for my own sibling so on march 10 2016 a few days before i turned 5 mama and papa went to the indian high commission in singapore to for approval to adopt a little baby from india i don't remember much of this but mama and papa to- told me that for the next 6 months they were busy collecting paper so that Kara would be convinced to that we were a good um home family for the baby girl we ho- hoped would soon join us when the social worker came to visit our house i asked if i could if she could bring the my baby sister home now but she said we had to be patient then suddenly just before my 6th birthday mama and papa had a call we were matched as a family for brinda We also learned that Brenda and Rehan mean the same meaning, Tulsi. I had to write a letter to Kara. It said, "Dear Kara, please bring my little sister home as soon as possible. I will love her a lot." From Rehan Bakdes. Now we have chosen you to join our family. But we were very nervous whether you would still would you would like us. So, Mama and Papa went to Bangalore for a day to meet you. I was not happy. But they said when when you woke up from your na- from your nap, you greeted them with the biggest smile. They knew this was it. 2 weeks later, along with Tata and Kati, we all returned to Vishranti, your first home where you will so love, so love to bring you home forever. I was such a proud brother. I still am though I still fight with you and trouble you. The day you came home was Easter Sunday. Guess what? I arrived into this family on Easter Sunday too. Finally, on your 8th month birthday, we got the court order. Not just in our hearts, but now in the eyes of law. You were truly Brenda Venkatesh and it was time for you to come home and join me in Singapore. I was waiting eagerly at the airport with our cousins, Prena and Pranaya. to welcome you and at home pretty perima and hari peripa had set up a grand welcome for you the first day in singapore was eid what a big celebration we had that day फिर से पकौड़े कर रही हो किसके लिए शुभम के लिए शुभम का बड़ा ख्याल है मम्मी क्यों ख्याल है है मेरा कुछ जब देखो बिगाड़ती रहती हूँ उसके लिए तली हुई चीजें बना बना कर या तो छोटा सा था तो उसको छोटे से पापड़ पकौड़े यही सब खाने का बड़ा शौक है खुद याद है और वो दिन याद है जब हम उससे मिलने गए थे तुमको ले गई थी मैं पहली बार बस दो महीने का था छोटा सा 
कैसा लगा था उससे मिलकर अच्छा तो लगा था मुझे तो मुझे देख देख मुझे भी ऐसे ही था उसको पकड़ के मैं खूब सारे याद किया ऐसा लगा था हम्म आज तो ग्यारह साल का हो गया है आज बन गया गुंडा बन गया हम्म आज भी पकोड़े खाने का उसको बहुत शौक है बहुत शौक है अच्छा एक बात बताओ जब मैंने तुमसे पहली बार कहा था कि हम बेटा बहुत लेने वाले हैं तो तुम्हारे दिमाग में क्या विचार आया था मम्मी क्या सोचा था तुमने मुझे तो अच्छा लग रहा था जब कोई छोटा से कुछ आए बट गोद लेने वाले हैं तो साधारण तो तो गोद ऐसे ही यूं तो नहीं लेते हैं क्या गोद है बच्चे आए छोटा बच्चा आए तो अच्छा ही लग जाना तुमको इतना प्यार था ना इससे है ना बहुत प्यार इतना इतना और ग्यारह साल हो गए हैं प्यार बढ़ा बहुत बड़ा आज उसके लिए क्यों पकौड़े बना रही उसके लिए उसके साथ साथ सब तो खाए सब खाएंगे ना वो खाली थोड़ी ना खाएगा और जब उसने तुमको पहली बार दीदू कहकर बुलाया था कैसा लगा था बहुत अच्छा लगा कैसी खुशी हुई खुशी हुई थी तो बोल पा रहे और अभी जब बुलाता है दीदू बदमाश यहाँ करता है सभी तो आता है सभी गुस्सा आता है नहीं ना तुम बहुत पटाई करती हो डांटती भी हो उसको तब झूठ भी बोलता है छोड़ी करके खा लेते हैं <laughs> तो तुम जब डांटते हो उसको कैसा लगता है तुमको उसको डांट कर बाद में अच्छा नहीं लगता है पर डांटना पड़ता है डांटना पड़ता है कितने कपड़े खिलाऊंगी आज इसमें फिर जितना चाहिए चार चार जितना चाहिए फिर चार क्या होता है जितना चाहिए उसको कम से कम तो चार तो उसको देना ही है चार देना है उसको देखो इधर देखो was the unconditional love of an adoptive grandmother for her grandson i believe motherhood is an emotion only a woman can feel i experienced it first through the eyes of my mother for all the thoughtfulness she displayed in bringing me up along with my brother from then on i knew whatever i become in life motherhood is going to be my priority I was only 19 when the idea of adopting crept into my heart and grew with me. I knew I could become a mother even without marriage. But 10 years later, I did get married to it. And I have a lovely daughter who's going to be 15 soon. She demanded a brother. When she was 2 years old, she demanded to have her own little brother. So another 5 years later my husband and I were adopted as parents by our son who was only 2 months old when we first set our eyes on him And of course my son has been a perpetual joy for the entire family All of 11 today he has grown to be full of life love affection compassion and humor a total entertainment for all of us it's an inexplicable contentment to have him adopt us as his family and the camaraderie that he shares with his sister is simply unmatched i could realize my desire of adopting with the support of my family and i knew come what may my mom's unconditional and enthusiastic support is going to be there despite the fact that she belongs to an older generation i guess it is an integral part of being a woman to feel motherly irrespective of whether the child is naturally born or adopted are you still confining your love in the name of blood don't you know that blood really doesn't discriminate especially when love is limitless
On top of your head. I am Savani, I am 7 years old. I am Malhar and I am 9 years old. Mother, his name is Abha and she is. And my father is Protip. If I put everything in my pocket. Oh, sorry, please. Baba, your pocket is to rock the party. It's really been amazing to see how these two uh, children, Malhar and Asanari, have uh, kind of grown up over the last uh, three or four years uh, together, and uh, five years together actually. And uh, the, the two of them are actually fundamentally very different from one another. Asanari is very independent minded, is very happy being at a distance away from us, doing her own thing. She's very courageous uh, and she really sticks to her guns. Whereas Malhar is much more shy and uh, stays very close to us, doesn't want to really get away too far away from us, always keeps us in his sights. Uh, so, but over the years now, uh, the two of them have become a little bit more like each other. Uh, Malhar will follow Asavari around and do courageous and very uh, independent minded things. Asavari has developed an interest in a lot of things that Malhar does, which is uh, being in the outdoors, uh, reading a lot. As Pratip mentioned, she's fiercely independent and uh, has a mind of her own. She's very proud of telling us that, that she has a mind of her own. Um, in fact, we learned this about her even before she joined our family. Uh, when we were having conversations with the agency, they mentioned that, uh, you know, Bachi is very ziddi, hai, very sweet, hai, ke to very ziddi. Hai. And we thought to ourselves, how ziddi can a two-year-old be? Uh, but we were soon to find out. As a family, we like to go play hiking and we like to play badminton, play frisbee, we like painting, painting. We like uh, playing tabla, singing, dancing, and yeah. You know, Abha and I actually met in uh, graduate school. This is uh, a good uh, 17, uh, 16, 17 years ago. And very early on, even before actually we decided that we would uh, get married and so on, we talked about our very strong desire to adopt a, a small girl. And, uh, and this was a desire we had come to independently. Right, right yeah. So I, I had thought about it maybe when I was in high school and I think with Abha also, she may have thought about it when she was also very young. And we just happened to discuss it and it became kind of almost a life's mission. We moved back to India from the US in 2014 and there was a number of reasons why we came back but one of the big ones was that we wanted to grow our family in this way. Uh, we had a son along the way, uh, Malha, who we have already met and uh, soon after we came here, as soon as it was feasible, we started the adoption process uh, via the Kara website. Things moved pretty fast, I would say within a couple of months of us registering, we had Asavari at home with us. The process itself was uh, really remarkable uh, with any kind of government process. I think all of us approach it with some kind of uh, trepidation and uh, wariness. But it was a very smooth process and what was really remarkable was that the uh, local officials in uh, Bihar where Asavari came from were extremely involved with her adoption. So the child uh, development officer came and personally said, I will have to hand over the child to you. So he and his assistant were both there and not just the officials even people in the town uh, where uh, uh, she was were so invested in our uh, getting a girl child home the hotel staff the restaurant people various people that we met who realized that we are not from there and we have come from some city from some faraway place were like oh aap kyo aai hai, aai hai yaha. oh bachi ke liye oh bahut acha bahut acha then when asari came uh, to to us uh, they all wanted to see her, wanted to hold her, talk to her. So that was a very, very heartwarming and lovely experience. And this was the case when we returned uh, six months later to finalize the adoption process. So even our, uh, our communication with the court and so on, getting all the papers sorted out and the final decree issued, everything went really, really smoothly. Even the lawyers and the judges in the courthouse were extremely warm and happy uh, for us. So we were really lucky that this whole process was really a positive one. Uh, right from the beginning, our parents, our extended families, everybody was on board and um, she's been extremely lucky. We've all been extremely lucky to have such a supportive environment in which to raise a family. Oh, cool! Look at that spider! Holy stitch, pop for the Look at the web! Holy stitch! Oh, wow! This is a never-before-same size. 
We've been a family for five years now. Happy, Happy World, World Adoption, Adoption Day! Day. Imagine what a world of difference it would have made had Appa been around to walk my daughter in the park. Imagine what a world of difference it would have made had Ajji been around to share words of wisdom that children seldom get to hear. If only my daughter had met Appa, never far from my mind, that thought always conjures up for me the image of an optician who shuffles lenses in combination to give you the sharpest possible focus on the present. That association is perhaps because more than anyone else, Appa and Ajay had shown me how families can love. Ajay doted on Appa son-in-law. I cannot even begin to imagine what it would have been like had both of them been around when A came home in 2009. Actually, it's uplifting even just to think about it. Ajay stayed with us for about a year before she passed. I was in my early 20s still unmarried. One morning she said to my sister and I, young people should live together before they decide to get married. With her characteristic nod and chuckle, she added, what's the point of finding out later that you won't get along? Things were not easy losing Appa in 2001, way too early and in difficult circumstances. It would all be different after Appa was gone, I had known. My marriage of 15 plus years also ended around then. Friends with whom I spent time between 2004 and 9 have told me how my conversations then were often about my need to adopt and my hope of recreating a sense of family. In my heart, I have perhaps known it would be easier to connect with a baby daughter but I had ended up leaving the gender slot blank in the adoption forms. My niece, aged eight then, had beseeched, Oh, mercy, girls are so boring. Please ask for a boy. I thought to myself, if I were giving birth, would I not simply just wait to see if it were a girl or a boy? What can I say of the 12 years that have breezed past? So many priceless memories as we have learned to travel together. Adoption stories have been part of our reading routine for a while. One winter night, we snuggled to read the story of a brave bird who had to ask her friend, the wise owl, to take her little baby bird away to another bird family far away. A terrible storm had knocked her baby, the nest, and the branch they called home to the ground that fateful night. As we read, I could sense A had grown progressively quiet and still. I looked down to see there were huge tears rolling down her eyes. Clearly, the story had touched a deep chord. 
I put the book away, held her close and asked what the matter was. She put her little hand to where her heart was to show where it hurt. She was fighting back huge sobs, but I felt she was perhaps more moved than perturbed. The next morning, I didn't bring it up, waiting to see if she will remember. She'd slept peacefully. Now, prancing around the room as she usually did on waking up, looking at herself in the mirror, referring to herself, she said to me in Hindi, Mama, A is so silly. It's fascinating how children will refer to themselves in the third person. I asked, why? Mama, A is so silly because she cried last night. I asked her to explain. Impatiently now, she stopped and said, Mama, A got so sad last night because she thought the story was true. I was stunned. To me, her words showed that at four and a half, she had already learned magically to understand and articulate the distinction between the story and herself. Wow! Some revelation that I could only shake my head in disbelief. Having accompanied me to seminar rooms in several different cities, A was soon as avid a traveler as Appa would have liked me to be at her age. Metaphorically too, traveling has taught us to take several different things in our stride. For instance, the ubiquitous questions, covert and overt, about father's name, designation, occupation, what have you. In social situations, we have now learned to exchange quick glances as we see this coming. In private, we even make jokes about getting boyfriends. What else can you expect from a single mom? I can hear them say. But the real crux lies beyond these personal reminiscences. The single parent experience is an important mirror for us as a society collectively. In India, a vibrant discussion about single parent adoption is still waiting to emerge. Enabling single parent adoption for both single men and women has certainly been a step in the right direction. We are now poised to build further as we consider how we regard single parent adoption in the next few years and as we contemplate the kind of society that we wish to become.